Hello everyone. Welcome. So I hope you're all doing well. So I wasn't able to go live with you all on the day of the new moon or the day after the new moon or, you know, you know what I mean? Like the day following the actual day of the new moon. So I thought I would come on and do a check-in with you guys um, to chat with you all to see how you're doing, tell you a little bit about how I'm doing and what I'm uh, going through, and then we'll pull some cards. So we are post new moon, but then we also have the fall equinox coming. So this is a very powerful time. And I think that's where I'll start off with you all is talking about where you're at now energetically. I know for myself, um, with this new moon that we just had, hi Ava, how are you? Um, with this new moon that we just had, we're still in the energy technically. I've been feeling this energy of like a new slate, like a new, like starting fresh, starting clean. So now technically new moon energy is kind of like a cosmic womb where you can kind of plant seeds for manifestation. Um, but this one in particular, I felt was actually pretty powerful for, um, surrendering that which we don't need. And also just creating a new template for going forward. So I've been feeling personally, this energy of the new moon is creating a very strong physical foundation for bringing our dreams into physical manifestation. So hi, Tommy. <laughs> How are you? Um, so yeah, I've been feeling the strong sense of like anything that I put out into the universe, probably around maybe the last full moon. Um... I can really start bringing into into reality now. I'm not sure how long it's going to take, but I do feel like I can get the ground running now, like physically, like actually start putting things into um, into place for myself. Whereas before there was a lot of reflection, a lot of note taking, kind of like clarifying to see like, okay, how am I going to do this? How, how do I want to do this? You know, how am I going to go about it? I'm still kind of doing that, but at the same time, I could tell that as we go into the fall season, things are really going to start coming together. And I've been receiving that message over and over again that during the fall, it's going to be like a harvest period where all the energy that you've been putting in probably for the past six months is really going to start coming into physical uh, fruition. So if you've been, you know, putting a lot of thoughts and intentions out there, I feel the fall time is when we're going to see a lot of support for that coming through on a physical level. So you might um, meet the right people to help you bring this idea or project about or situation. Um, you might also find that other factors just start lining up more. I mean, that this is what it feels like to me that physically things are going to start coming together. Um, I also feel for this period that a lot of us are releasing a lot of illusions, okay? So if there's anything that has caused us to have a blindfold over our eyes in terms of the way things, the way we think they are, as opposed to how they really are, um, it just feels like we are uh, releasing a lot of stuff that maybe wasn't true for us or is no longer true for us um, in the present moment. I do also feel for some people that there may be an aspect of love that's coming together, uh, you know, in a positive way. So partnership feels like it might be a theme also. Um, but even more, I just feel like this energy of transcendence. So if there's any kind of like, if there was any kind of mental blockages, like, oh, I, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I have, I don't know if I have what it takes. I don't know. If I'm skilled enough, well, let me just get this one last thing in before I actually carry it out. It feels like you're going to be transcending your own limits, okay? So you're really going to be pushing the envelope. That's what it feels like for some of you. Um, so that's really good, expanding to a whole new level. So um, I really like that. Um, but I'm trying to, like, remember, like, all the stuff that I've been experiencing because... If you saw my post on Instagram and on here, and you know the post that I put up with the picture of me um, maybe about a week or so ago, 
you'll know that I've been going through a big transformation period, but it's unlike the other transformations that I've been through before. This transformation is one that feels to be a like a permanent change, which puts me in <clears throat> in an observer's posi uh, position. Whereas before, I feel like I was I was identifying or allowing myself to more so be bound by my emotions, by you know my feelings or my thoughts. I was always working on it, working, moving beyond uh, that kind of approach. But I feel like now I've come to this period where I've been able to take a step back and just observe the emotions, really just observe the thoughts, as opposed to anytime something comes up, I think automatically we have a tendency to try and resist um, the expression of a certain emotion. I don't mean physically expressing it, but I mean feeling it, tuning into it. I've always tuned into my emotions as much as possible. Like I've always set the intention to do that. But there was always something that made me feel almost um, kind of like I was going in like a roundabout with certain like fears, certain fears that I had. Uh, some fears were hard for me to release. And I'm sure, you know, there's a lot that I'm, I'm still working on. But I feel like within these past few weeks, uh, I've taken on more of an observer position where if there's an emotion that comes up, whether it be fear or anxiety or like a panic in a way, it's more like, okay, let's work with that. Let's, let's sit with it. And what I've noticed is that when I just allow it to come up and show itself and let it do what it needs to do, it goes away on its own. So it's, it's hard to fully explain because I feel like I've always done that in a way, but I think because of where I was before in terms of like, maybe what I didn't release before or, you know, cause healing really does a lot. What, what you're able to release and what you're able to heal brings you into the next level of experience. So I feel like now I've gotten to this place where I've been able to heal so much that the approach that I've always used is now like gone, gone, that approach has gone to the next level. So I'm able to just kind of like, it always feels like I'm in the back. So as opposed to being forward, I'm always kind of just in the background. So it's a, it's a very interesting place to be. Now, this goes also for diet. Okay, so now in the past, I was feeling like, okay, I need to make sure that I eat certain foods, because that the idea is that if you are working with higher level energies that you need to have certain foods in your system or to um, reduce the consumption of certain foods in order to keep your vibration high. Now, more recently, that has not been the case. So I have not been feeling any form of restriction when it comes to food. Now, I have my own baseline for what I'm going to eat. Like, I know I'm not going to eat out every single day. I know I'm not going to eat pizza every single day, even though pizza is great. It's not something that I'm going to eat every day, mainly because I just don't want to. So it's not even a matter of, well, I can't. It's like, I just don't want to. So that's like my baseline. I don't want to eat pizza every day because I know I'm going to feel like crap. Um, so, uh, but I feel like in the past, I more so would try to stick mainly to fruits, vegetables, and abstain from certain foods only, let's say, three times a week. Let's say I would only eat meat three times a week or whatever. But now that I've taken on this observer position, it's to the point where I can eat pretty much whatever it is that I want. Keyword would be want. So always being in touch with myself and seeing, okay, what do I want to eat today? And sometimes the body calls for things that may not be what could be considered part of a spiritual diet. Personally, I don't really think there's any sort of thing. I think it really depends on you and what your body calls for in the moment. And it does take some time and experience to be able to tune into what the body's actually calling for, as opposed to, um, let's say what your, if you're going through something emotional, like emotionally eating, there's a, there's a difference. Um, so I noticed that I was able to, after some time, see, okay, you know, I could have this, but when I tune into my body, I don't actually want it. So uh, it's an interesting place to be to not be attached to a certain diet, just to allow myself to go with the flow and explore these different realms of, of food. And, and uh, it doesn't, 
like in the past, if I ate certain foods, I noticed it, my channels would start to get stuffy and things would start to shut down. Now it really doesn't matter. I could eat whatever I want. So I'm just kind of going with the flow of that and seeing where it takes me. But yes, um, to whoever's watching, if you've been going through anything specific, you can list that or, you know, state that below in the comments. Um, but I do want to pull some cards for us and see where this energy of the energy of post new moon going into the equinox where that is taking us um, i feel personally really good about it so i'm going to use three decks i'm going to try to follow my typical format i'm going to pull one card that's the idea one card and maybe more from the angel dreams oracle i don't know if i've ever used this one in a live i'm going to use it today though and this is by Doreen Virtue and Melissa Virtue, which is her daughter. Um, I'm also going to pull a card from the Spirit of the Animals Oracle. I think it's a very grounded deck and I um, think it'll give us some, you know, very mundane perspective. And well, the last deck <laughs> I'm going to use, I do not have the box for in front of me, but I'm going to be using the Energy Oracle by Sandra Ann Taylor. This is the back of the cards. So I'm going to use those. You can look up the deck if you like, just to get an idea of what the cover looks like if you want to get them. I personally love the deck. I think it's very versatile and it touches upon so many aspects of life. So let's see. Okay, so I'm going to get started now. So I'm going to start with the Angel Dreams Oracle cards and see what comes through. So we're calling upon Mother, Father, God from the highest vibration of love and light and our spiritual team from the highest vibration of love and light, asking that you bring forth messages that we need to know for our highest and best good at this time. What is it that we need to know for our highest and best good at this time? Okay, so I want to pull that card. There's one that kind of popped out, so I'm taking that. So, see, I'm, I'm pulled one, but I'm now being guided to kind of pull more than one. So I'm just going to go with the flow. All right, I'm going to pull that one. Okay. All right, so let's see what has come out here. Wow, so cool. Okay, so the first card we got is Astral Travel. Astral Travel and uh, the words on the bottom say Vital Force, Information, Dream time, soul travel. So what this says to me is that some of you will be engaging in some astral travel, uh, but this says to me specifically that there is some information that you will be retrieving either in your dream state or in meditation. Okay, so this says to me that the goddess, the divine mother, will be giving you some information that is pertinent to your life's mission or your journey. And this has to do with where you are now, but also where you'll be going. Okay, so the next steps, it will serve as a way for you to understand why the next steps need to be taken and what what the foundation of those steps will be. Okay. Um, some of this also feels connected to like... Um, a Native American shamanic energy. So some of you connect with that either through like a past life or something like that, or it's in your bloodline. And it does show me that in some way, I'm also getting like an Aboriginal energy uh, for some of you. So some of you may be going in that direction with your, you know, exploration, looking into stuff like that. Uh, but I see that this is a method that you used in another lifetime, astral travel to get in touch with your guides, to get in touch with certain masters and guardians, to retrieve certain bits of information. So I feel for some of you, this will be increasing for you. It's something that you'll be carrying out a little bit more and the divine will be co-creating um, this kind of situation for you to be able to retrieve what you need for your journey. I really like that. Okay, so next one is... Interesting, because we're in the opposite. <laughs> um, waning Moon. So that's the next card. 
which is introspection and self inventory. So this card is telling you to check in. That's what this card is telling you to do. This card is asking you to take a step back, check in with your energy, see how you're feeling. Um, see what you've experienced so far where you've been. So this is a good time to reflect on the past few months um, and how things have been for the past few months, what you've experienced, what you've learned. I feel like this is about taking stock, okay? And um, seeing what you've acquired, what you've released, and how you're different now than you were a few months ago, how things have changed, okay? Um, I feel like for some of you as well, this is about you going into a state of reflection um, and meditation. When it comes to clarifying, what is it that you'd like to do next? I, I feel like meditating and reflecting will help you have an idea of what, what you're guided to do next. So this is telling you to go inward. That's what introspection is. <laughs> it's telling you to go inward and find the answers to the questions that you've been asking, okay? I feel that the answers will be given to you at that time when you're introspecting. Hi, Crystal. Thank you. I'm so you always come in at a good time. Um, we've just kind of started with the cards, um, and you can watch after from the beginning. But yes, this is about going into like hermit mode a little bit. So you're being asked to introspect because I feel like the time coming up is going to be pivotal for like we were talking about bringing things into physical manifestation so it's like what what do, what do you want to manifest and kind of fine-tuning those intentions okay um the, I, the colors are similar there oh all the colors are like a blue wow so it's very interesting okay so the last card is winter and as you could see, like all the cards have like this kind of bluish tone, which says to me that it's a very mellow, very internal, uh, very hermit-like energy with this dark blue. So winter. So it says reflection, transition, and release. So you're in a period of transition. So what I heard is take it easy. <laughs> Be easy on yourself during this period because you are going through the end of a cycle Okay, so a cycle has just ended. You're releasing a lot. You have released a lot. So now is, is not the time to be going crazy with stuff. Just give yourself some time to catch up. That's what I feel like this is about. It's about catching up energetically, mentally, emotionally, and just giving yourself time to process the change. I do feel that a lot of this has to do with the fall transition. And I'm telling you earlier, it was yesterday, but earlier this morning, I was feeling so weird. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Thank you for hopping on and joining me. Um, I was feeling so weird earlier and I'm like, it's got to be a combination of this new moon energy as well as the fall transition because the fall transition is pretty intense. Like fall into winter, eh, you know, winter into spring is pretty intense. Spring into summer, eh, like you could feel it, but it's not too intense. But I feel like, uh, uh, Summer into fall is a really intense transition. So you have to give yourself time to adjust. Uh, you may go through a lot of weird cycles emotionally. So give yourself time to adjust to the energy, okay? That's what this card is saying. So that's pretty much it for that deck. So, but as you could see, like I was guided to pull one, but then I pulled three. So, and they all kind of like are speaking the same message. All right, so I'm gonna pull a card or so <laughs> from the spirit of the animals oracle okay by jody berg bergsma all right so let's see what the animals the spirit animals have for us here okay i'm called to pull this one and that one so two all right so i didn't even shuffle that much but the two cards stood out to me. Ooh, okay. So we have cat, independent. Wow, that's so cool. So it says, you are a natural healer. Your intuition is strong. You don't have to go with the crowd. Life supports you in every way. 
So what this says to me is that it's going to be very important for you during this period um, to stand on your own when it comes to your thoughts and your feelings. So this may be a period where you feel like you're being singled out because your thoughts may not be in alignment with the people around you. You may see things in a different way and that's fine. That's important because you're you, you're unique and you're unconventional. All right. So it's very important for you to stick to your values, what you see as important to you and not be so concerned about being on the same page as everybody else. Um, that's fine. You may see things differently and it's important that you see things in the way that you see them. There's a reason for that. Now with the... As I look at this image, I really do see this kind of like deep um, sense of like <laughs> soul penetration. Like it looks like they're able to see through people. So they're able to see the truth. They have a very strong intuition. So what this says to me is that the cat spirit may also be helping you to navigate through a certain situation using your intuition, uh, feeling things very deeply and knowing knowing the truth within yourself. I feel like there may be people around you that are not being completely honest. Now that doesn't mean it's in a bad way, like betrayal for some, it might be, but I just feel like some people may be saying certain things and they may feel another way. And what this says to me is that you'll be able to see through that or the cat spirit will be helping you to see through that. Okay. Um, so what this says to me is use your discernment. Cat will be helping you to use your discernment in all situations, whether involving friends, co-workers, on a more grand um, macro scale. Okay, so that's what this says to me with this card. Also, I feel for some of you, um, soul family is important. So there's like independence, like being on your own uh, with your thoughts and feelings, but then also finding people that are on the same page as you. So people of like mind and finding your soul family. Okay. So that'll be a focus for, Ooh, this is so cute. I love it. And it's a good card too. Frog. Frog is the next one. Prosperity and such pretty art too. I love that. Okay. So it says, uh, let go of the past and embrace change. Opportunities are close at hand. Hop into this new, <laughs> hop in, get it? Hop into this new day with joy. Um, abundance and good fortune await you. So what this says to me, I'm actually very drawn to the fact that there are three frogs. I feel like the number three is very important. What this says to me is that again, you've reached the end of the cycle and for some of you, you may be waiting for your ships to come in. So I get like this kind of like, um, this kind of like three of wands kind of tarot energy, which is like waiting for the ships to come in. So I feel like you're kind of like on the lookout. You're kind of waiting. I, I do feel like they're saying kind of expect the best, expect the best for yourself. Um, there's that message. Um, and I also feel that spirit is asking you and frog is asking you to have a very open mind, like be open to doing things a little bit differently than you've done them before. Be open to releasing any kind of like, how can I say this? It's like be open and flexible with this period coming up because I feel like it may be different, but it feels like a good different. It's like they're asking you to be adventurous uh, with this. Don't take things too seriously and don't be so so quick to kind of stay in your comfort zone, this is going to require you to kind of step out and, you know, just, <laughs> just be open-minded. And with that, I see that there is prosperity that comes with it. Like there's so many good things waiting for you. That's what this feels like. Okay. I'm going to pull one more. <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> uh, do I want to pull from the top? I think I want to pull from the middle. Oh, beautiful. So the last one is dragonfly magic. And it says, I embrace my transformation. 
I courageously let go of the past. There's that again. The magic of nature is in me. I am brilliant and I am blessed. So what this says to me is that there is a lot of magic going on behind the scenes. So basically, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that you may not know about. I also feel a very strong connection to the energy of transformation here. So you are transforming on such a deep level and you need to trust in the process of that transformation. It's a magical process, okay? Which means that there is a lot going on that you may not be able to understand, okay? And I feel like it's such a beautiful process. I feel like the beauty of it is almost magical. It's something out of this world almost. So it's beyond your the realm of kind of like the usual and, and the mundane and the typical. Um, so I feel like this card almost brings the energy of miracles and the unexpected as well. So yeah, embrace this process of transformation. There's so, so much that is going on in your favor. So much that's happening for you in your favor. So it's just saying to be positive about the process. Okay. Yes. So, okay. So I'm going to move on to the next set of cards. I also feel we have whale working. Some of you have power animal whale that's working with you. That's one of my, my main, my, my main guides. One of my main animals, spirit animals is the whale. But the whale encourage us to get, encourages us to get in touch with the um, song of our soul, our energy signature. Okay, so that's like on the highest levels of who we are, the purest version without being pulled in any sort of direction when it comes to um, our ego or our fears or any kind of thoughts that are of a lower level. This encourages us to be the encourages us what, what's wrong with me <laughs> encourages us to be the purest version of who we are okay so you are getting for some of you you're getting in touch with your divine template so just keep that in mind <laughs> i feel like i want to ha- uh, give you that as another message all right so i'm going to be using the energy oracle as the last set of cards and we'll see what comes out these are a little bit more balanced <laughs> so these have some positive cards and some more darker cards. So we'll see what comes out. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. So two cards came out. I'm going to go with it. <laughs> and I feel like I want to pull one more. So sorry, that was a loud shuffle. Okay. I'm seeing the career angel come out. So spirit is going to be helping you to take steps, the steps necessary uh, when it comes to your career. So you may be trying to decide what direction you want to go in with your career. It feels like it might be steps you need to take to make a change in your career, take things to the next level in your career, expand in your career. I feel like some of you might be exploring your horizons a little bit when it comes to your career. Um, but I feel like some of you feel like there's a change that needs to happen when it comes to your career, like something needs to level up and grow. So there's like growth there. Um, so you'll be expanding your horizons, some of you, okay? Okay, first card. This is, oh, yes, this, these, oh, okay. Two of them came out. So um, this is the first one, the thinking man. So that's very interesting. Um, the thinking man, 46. So what this says to me, is that, wow, 
Oh boy. Okay, hold on. Let me sit with this for a second because it feels like it has at least like three interpretations. Like there's different ways that you could go with this. So I'm like... I feel like for some of you... Um, okay, Sarah, have a good day. Um, I feel like for some of you... Oh my gosh. This is an energy that you are being asked to embody. Um, um, see, um, because this could mean somebody in your life, but I also feel like this is a representation of you. I feel like for some of you, this is who you have been, or this is like tuning into your divine masculine aspect. That's a little bit more mental. So I feel like for some of you, this is what you're being asked to embody. Now, I know it says the thinking man, but I also see the thinking woman. So it could be man, could be a woman. It's the thinking energy or the mental energy that you're being asked to kind of like make room for. So I feel like what spirit is saying is to use your mental faculties for your benefit. So what you're seeing here is actually the magician. Okay, so it's the energy of the magician. So the magician is able to use his tools of intention, of focus, of manifestation to bring things into his reality. So this also says to me, I, I see Archangel Metatron's energy in this card as well, that some of you will be working with the energy of manifestation, but I feel like you'll also be, you'll also be coming up with a plan or some sort of outline for what you want to accomplish, your goals, uh, your priorities, you know, so I feel like there's this energy of getting things into, getting things set up for yourself, <laughs> getting things set up for yourself, but in such a way where it's very like, you're writing things down, so not just necessarily thinking about it, you're writing things down, and getting things prepared for for physical manifestation. And writing things down physically is very important. And it's very helpful, actually. Um, yeah, definitely Archangel Metatron is in this card. He's going to be helping you to get um, organized. Okay? I'm just checking the time here. Five. Okay. So he's going to be helping you to get organized here. Get organized. Get a plan together for yourself. And... Um, yeah, th that's what I get the sense of. And I feel like the fact that he's looking at the crystal is a representation of crystal clear intentions. He's getting really laser focused on what he wants and how he's going to go about it. Okay. And then once he has a plan, he's going to be able to take action on that or just set things up for himself in a way where it's all the other factors are going to be able to come together because he knows what he wants. Okay. So this is what you're being asked to embody. Um, or what you will be embodying in this period, okay? So the next card is, and it's beautiful, Cornucopia, which is abundance. Ooh, Buster Rhymes playing. I love Buster Rhymes. Sorry. <laughs> I just, I love like, you know, old school Buster Rhymes. So um, Cornucopia. Um, so this is a card of abundance. It's a card of gratitude also. So I feel like, let me look at this card for a second. What this card says is that you have everything that you will ever need. Okay. It says that you have everything that you will ever need. You are supported in this process that you're in. Prosperity is here for you. Stability is here for you. So I just feel like a very strong sense of security. That's what this feels like. So spirit asks you to express gratitude for the stability, for the support that you already have. Okay. So, I mean, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, I see even with like food, I, I just feel like spirit is saying all of your needs are met. All of your needs are met. They will be met. Have that as your mindset. Okay. That's like the message here. And I'll see if I could go over it again. Um, 
I feel like this, especially going into the fall season, um, you're going to be grateful for everything that you have. I feel like you're going to be putting your mind in that direction of gratitude and being grateful for all the things that you've been able to acquire over this period, kind of meditating on, on that and being grateful for it. And it doesn't have to be just physical stuff. It could just be your mental state, your health. You know what I mean? So gratitude for that. All right. So let's see what else. Oh, I love it. The angel of love. Remember we talked about love earlier, guys. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, so, so that's, let's see, 49. Oh, so beautiful. Okay. All right, so with the angel of love, wow. I have to sit with it. One of the first things I'm seeing is that we have Archangel Shamuel that comes through with this card. And this spirit, this energy is going to be assisting you in the manifestation of true love. So now when we talk about true love, you're talking to me here. So we're talking about true love. We're not just talking about a relationship with another person. True love is embodying love. So it's self-love, right? So I feel, hmm, you know, it's funny. I feel like the energy of the gratitude is going into this card as well. So I feel like there's so much abundance here with the energy of love. So you might be feeling more love in your life going into this period. I see also romance. So there is romance. I feel like there, that might be blossoming in your life. I feel like you're going to feel loved going into this period. I feel like whether it be through a partner or through friends and family, I feel like you're going to start feeling more love in your heart and surrounding you. Okay. Um, I just feel it in my body. I just feel like, you know, when you look at cards, they all have like a different energy to them. And I just feel like this love just around me, within me, it just feels like it's all over. And it's such a peaceful feeling. It's such a peaceful feeling. And just, you know, that feeling when you're, you know, you're loved. So you feel very settled and content. Um, that's what it feels like. So I feel like you're going to be reflecting and meditating upon the energy of love going into this period. Okay. Spirit also encourages you to focus on love, okay? So focus more of your thoughts and intentions on love. I personally say love affirmations every day, every morning. So I recommend that you do the same. Um, wearing the color pink or um, having flowers in your space is also very helpful for that, for bringing in the energy of love and focusing on it. So yeah, I feel like that would be helpful for you as well. Oh my gosh, y'all, listen, <laughs> I just pulled the next card. Look, man holding a heart. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, Tommy, see ya. Thank you for watching. All right. So this is, this is amazing. Oh my God. Wow. I'm just, I get excited for, it's just cool, you know. I get excited for everyone when these cards come out because I know for a lot of people it's it's a rough area um, to deal with. So man holding a heart, what this says to me is that there is somebody in your life either right now or coming in the future that is going to express their feelings to you. Okay, so I feel like now, because this reading isn't necessarily specified for, let's say, this week, two weeks, this is a pre-equinox reading, so I feel like this is kind of like what they're preparing us for. I feel this energy going into maybe November, um, so I feel like this is something that you might see, like, <sighs> manifest around later in the fall. That's kind of like what I get the impression of. So, wow. And I'm, I'm guided to not go too deep into it. It's like the main messages are on the surface. Like, so you don't have to go too deeply into it. 
I feel I just feel like there's somebody in your life now, somebody coming that's going to express their love for you. They're going to be supportive of you. They're going to it just feels like there's more companionship. Um, again, I, I just feel like you're going to feel a, a great sense of love going into this period. Remember, like I said, we talked about this in the beginning. Um, some of you might have missed it, but I did say something about love and partnership. Um, I really like this because I feel like even with the number nine, that because that's the number at the top of the card is is nine. <laughs> There's people arguing outside. Glad you can't hear it. Um, nine feels to me like someone might have reached the end of a cycle when it comes to their relationship area. So if there was any maybe like bad habits in the realm of relationships, um, it feels like there might be the end of a cycle when it comes to that. I, d I just feel like there's a lot of mental energy with this person too. So they might have you on their mind. So whether they're here now or in the future, that's their energy. They have you on their mind or they're thinking about you a lot. And I feel like they want to come forward and express their love for you. I just, and I feel a lot of energy around the chest area too. So the heart, um, so there's a lot of mental energy, but they, there's also an increase of energy within the chest area for this person. Okay. So I feel like, and for some people, somebody might want to make up something to you and maybe give you a gift or um, something like that. So that that's what I get the sense of. Okay. So, and I feel like for some people, broken hearts will be mending. That's what that feels like. There feels like for some people, there's been some issues in the relationship area related to like past stuff that has caused heartbreak or heartache or something. So I do feel like going into this period, we'll see more love. <laughs> Part of me wants to pull one more, but honestly, with this deck, you could pull all these cards and then pull something like <laughs> crazy, you know? I wonder if I should take the chance. Okay. You know what? There, okay. So I feel like the top card is kind of peeking out, so... I'm going to go with it. And it's Archangel Metatron, the sixth chakra. Hmm, interesting. So what's interesting about this card with Archangel Metatron is I feel like some of you might receive some insights, intu intuitive insights, but I feel like also creative ideas. So you might receive some insights in the realm of creativity that you'd like to bring forward into physicality. I see a lot of imagination here too. So some of you, this is a third eye chakra, so that's relevant. Um, it's connected to imagination. So some of you might be exploring your imagination more. I feel like you might be doing a lot of daydreaming, you know, kind of like sifting through your thoughts and your, and the images in your mind to see like what you can do with that. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's some sort of like insights or realization or something like that. So that's kind of cool. I had to pull from the middle. See how this goes with me? Uh, third chakra, Archangel Shamuel. Shamuel's energy has been kind of strong. And that's 10. Wow. Archangel Shamuel is going to be helping a lot of people bring things into alignment. So when I say bring things into alignment, it's like making sure everything is in its rightful place when it comes to carrying out certain things. So as I've said before, the third chakra, the solar plexus, is very important for bringing things together physically. So in order to bring things together physically... Uh, you have to be able to um, take physical action. You know, it's not just about thinking and reflecting. You have to be able to physically carry it out and take action. And for some people, that's hard. Um, but I feel like Archangel Shamuel is going to be helping you to get your gears going. Okay, so 
thoughts, but then within the solar plexus, we manifest them. We're able to carry them out physically, okay? So these are all good. These are good cards, okay? All really beautiful cards. I'm happy to see them. <laughs> all right, so uh, let me see. I'm just looking over them as a last scan. Wow. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, we're, we're good. Okay. All right, everyone. So I hope you all enjoyed that post new moon slash pre equinox check in. Really beautiful energy. I'm excited for what's coming. All right. So I send you all so much love and gratitude. And hopefully I'll be back to posting videos soon. I don't know. Like, I haven't been posting them regularly because of everything that's going on. But we'll see. Um, but I send you all so much love and gratitude. Take care. Bye-bye.